Jomo Kenyatta, an influential Kenyan leader, fought against colonialism and governed Kenya as prime minister and later as its first president. He played a pivotal role in Kenya's transition from a British colony to an independent republic. Kenyatta championed African nationalism and conservatism, leading the Kenya African National Union Party. He was born to Kikuyu farmers, received education in mission schools, and became politically active through the Kikuyu Central Association. Despite facing imprisonment and exile, he persisted in his pursuit of independence. As president, Kenyatta centralized power, suppressed dissent, promoted ethnic reconciliation, pursued capitalist economic policies, expanded education and healthcare, and adopted a pro-Western foreign policy. Early life, childhood and education, Jomo Kenyatta, a prominent figure in Kenyan history and the country's first president, was born into the Kikuyu community in the village of Njenda. However, due to the lack of official birth records among the Kikuyu, the exact date of his birth remains uncertain. Some biographers suggest he was likely born in 1890, while others propose a birth year around 1897 or 1898. His father, Mwigai, was a relatively wealthy man who owned a homestead near River Thiririka, where the family grew crops and raised livestock. Mwigai had multiple wives, each living in a separate hut within the homestead. Kenyatta grew up immersed in Kikuyu traditions and customs, learning the skills required to care for the family's flock. When he turned 10, a significant event marked his transition from childhood, his earlobes were pierced, following Kikuyu tradition. After his father's passing, Kenyatta's mother, Wamboi, married Njenji, Mwigai's younger brother. Kenyatta then took the name Kamau Wanjenji. Eventually, Wamboi gave birth to a new son named Mwigai, unfortunately, Njenji proved to be harsh and resentful towards Kenyatta and his brothers. As a result, Wamboi decided to take Kenyatta's younger half-brother to live with her family up north, where she later passed away. Kenyatta, who deeply cared for the young Mwigai, traveled to collect his infant half-brother and then moved in with his grandfather, Kongo Wamagana, whom he assisted as a traditional healer, education and exposure to missionaries, during November 1909, Kenyatta left home and enrolled at the Church of Scotland Mission CSM, at Thogotu. The missionaries at the school aimed to introduce Christianity to the indigenous people of Eastern Africa as part of Britain's civilizing mission. While at the mission, Kenyatta received an education, learning to read and write in English and familiarizing himself with biblical stories, Kenyatta's academic progress was unremarkable and in 1912, he became an apprentice to the mission's carpenter. The following year, he underwent the Kikuyu circumcision ritual, a significant rite of passage for recognition as an adult in Kikuyu tradition. In August 1914, he was baptized as John Stone Kamau after choosing the name John Stone in reference to the apostles John and Peter, despite his dedication to Christianity. Kenyatta faced challenges in his personal life. He engaged in relationships outside of wedlock, leading to conflict with the missionaries. However, in November 1922, he officially renounced alcohol and married Grace Wahoo, who gave birth to their son, Peter Mwigai, the previous year. Kenyatta's involvement with communists and his strong criticism of British imperialism in articles he wrote for communist newspapers raised concerns among his liberal patrons. He assured Drummond Shields, the Under-Secretary of State for the Colonies, that he was not associated with communist circles and was unaware of the nature of the newspapers that published his articles. Shields advised him to return to Kenya to promote peaceful political engagement among the Kikuyu. In September 1930, after 18 months in Europe, 
Kenyatta returned to Kenya. His time abroad elevated his prestige among the Kikuyu, who admired him for experiencing life in Europe. However, he returned to a heightened debate over the topic of female genital mutilation FGM, within Kikuyu society. The Protestant churches supported its abolition, while the KCA defended the practice, fearing its impact on the social structure. Kenyatta, as the KCA's secretary, expressed a personal opposition to FGM but argued that its legal abolition could be counterproductive. He advocated for educating people about its harmful effects on women's health instead, as tensions escalated, the head of the Church of Scotland in Kenya expelled Kenyatta from the church, accusing him of dishonesty during the FGM debate. In response, Kenyatta removed his son from the church school and enrolled him in a KCA-approved independent school, returned to Europe, 1931-1933, in May 1931. Kenyatta and Parmina's Makiri returned to Britain to represent the KCA at a joint committee of parliament on the future of East Africa. This trip marked his departure from Kenya for the next 15 years. In Britain, he attended various socialist gatherings and a Save the Children conference on African children in Geneva. He also met with the Indian independence leader, Mohandas Gandhi, during his stay in London. Later that year, he enrolled at the Woodbrook Quaker College in Birmingham and studied English writing. Kenyatta's involvement with communists and his strong criticism of British imperialism in articles he wrote for communist newspapers raised concerns among his liberal patrons. He assured Drummond Shields, the Under Secretary of State for the Colonies, that he was not associated with communist circles and was unaware of the nature of the newspapers that published his articles. Shields advised him to return to Kenya to promote peaceful political engagement among the Kikuyu. In September 1930, after 18 months in Europe, Kenyatta returned to Kenya. His time abroad elevated his prestige among the Kikuyu, who admired him for experiencing life in Europe. However, he returned to a heightened debate over the topic of female genital mutilation FGM, within Kikuyu society. The Protestant churches supported its abolition, while the KCA defended the practice, fearing its impact on the social structure. Kenyatta, as the KCA's secretary, expressed a personal opposition to FGM but argued that its legal abolition could be counterproductive. He advocated for educating people about its harmful effects on women's health instead, as tensions escalated, the head of the Church of Scotland in Kenya expelled Kenyatta from the church, accusing him of dishonesty during the FGM debate. In response, Kenyatta removed his son from the church school and enrolled him in a KCA-approved independent school, returned to Europe, 1931-1933, in May 1931. Kenyatta and Parmina's Makiri returned to Britain to represent the KCA at a joint committee of parliament on the future of East Africa. This trip marked his departure from Kenya for the next 15 years. In Britain, he attended various socialist gatherings and a Save the Children conference on African children in Geneva. He also met with the Indian independence leader, Mohandas Gandhi, during his stay in London. Later that year, he enrolled at the Woodbrook Quaker College in Birmingham and studied English writing. While in Britain, Kenyatta developed a close friendship with George Padmore, an Afro-Caribbean Marxist working for the Soviet-run Comintern. In late 1932, both Padmore and Kenyatta relocated to Moscow, where Kenyatta studied at the Communist University of the Toilers of the East. Despite visiting Siberia, there is no evidence that Kenyatta joined the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, however, the emergence of Germany's Nazi government changed political alliances in Europe, causing the Soviet Union to reduce its support for anti colonial movements in Africa. During World War II, Jomo Kenyatta found himself caught up in the conflict and its aftermath. He witnessed the significant contribution of Africans in the British Army. With 300,000 of his people fighting against the Germans in East Africa, 
resulting in the loss of 60,000 lives. He believed that if Africans were deemed fit to fight alongside white men, they should have a direct say in governing their country and access to education. In September 1939, when the United Kingdom entered the war, Kenyatta and his wife, Edna, moved to Storrington in Sussex. He lived there for the duration of the war, embracing rural life and working as an agricultural laborer to avoid military conscription. During this time, he wrote an essay on the political independence of his tribe and began a novel based on his experiences, although it remained unfinished. Kenyatta also delivered lectures across the country, including to East African soldiers stationed in Britain. In August 1940, Kenyatta married Edna Grace Clark, an English woman, and they had a son named Peter Magana in 1943. However, Kenyatta's political activities remained dormant during this period, and intelligence services monitored him closely. In 1945, Kenyatta and other members of the International African Service Bureau IASB, planned the 5th Pan-African Congress, which took place in Manchester. The conference debated whether Africans should pursue a gradual campaign for independence or resort to military force. Kenyatta supported the resolution stating that force might be necessary as a last resort. He also authored a pamphlet titled Kenya, the Land of Conflict, combining calls for independence with idealized descriptions of pre-colonial Africa. After the British victory in World War II, Kenyatta received a request to return to Kenya in September 1946. However, he decided not to bring Edna and their second child with him due to racial laws that would make their lives difficult. In Mombasa, he reunited with his first wife, Grace Wahoo, and their children. Kenyatta built a home near his birthplace and engaged in farming. Kenyatta met with the new governor of Kenya and took on various roles, including serving on the African Land Settlement Board and becoming the vice principal of the Koinange Independent Teachers College. He expanded the college's facilities and student enrollment but faced challenges such as declining standards and teacher strikes. In August 1944, the Kenya African Union KAU, was founded as the primary political outlet for indigenous Africans. Kenyatta was elected as KAU's president in 1947 and gained widespread support among the Kikuyu people. He emphasized intertribal representation and conducted party business in Swahili to appeal to a broader base. He also reached out to India's Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, to build connections with Kenya's Indian community, despite his opposition to illegal activities, including workers' strikes. Kenyatta's gradualist and peaceful approach contrasted with the emergence of the Mau Mau uprising. Although some Mau Mau militants idolized him, Kenyatta distanced himself from the movement and publicly denounced their actions. However, within KAU, more militant African nationalists gained influence, and the party called for Kenyan independence within three years. In January 1952, a secret central committee within KAU formed, advocating direct action. Kenyatta had limited control over these developments and felt frustrated and lonely without the intellectual companionship he experienced in Britain. Trial and Conviction, 1952 to 1953. In October 1952, Jomo Kenyatta was arrested and transported to Nairobi then flown to the remote region of Lokotong in northwest Kenya. Detained without specific charges, Kenyatta's arrest aimed to quell civil unrest, but the government refrained from exile, fearing he would become a martyr. Eventually, Kenyatta and five other KAU members were accused of orchestrating the proscribed Mau Mau movement. The trial took place in Kapanguria, away from public attention. Kenyatta assembled a defense team of international lawyers, but the judge, sympathetic to the government, found them guilty in April 1953. Sentenced to seven years of hard labor, Kenyatta denounced the verdict, claiming they were scapegoats to suppress KAU. Although the trial lacked solid evidence, the appeals process confirmed their convictions, 
except for Oniko. The Privy Council in London rejected Kenyatta's case, likely influenced by political motivations. The government intensified its crackdown, banning KAU and seizing Kenyatta's land and property. Imprisonment and International Support, 1954-1961, following the trial, Jomo Kenyatta and his fellow inmates were interned at the newly built Lokotong prison. Kenyatta, due to his age, became their cook while the others were forced to break rocks. Over time, their treatment improved, especially when P. de Robeck became the district officer. In prison, Kenyatta befriended Waruhiu Aitote, a captured Mau Mau commander, and even taught him English. Rivalry grew among the inmates, resulting in an unsuccessful attempt to stab Kenyatta. His health deteriorated due to poor conditions and physical restraints, Kenyatta's imprisonment transformed him into a political martyr, garnering support for his release. Calls for his freedom came from various individuals and nations, including Jaramoji Ojingo Odinga, Montague Slater, and Rawson Makaria. He became a symbol of African nationalism across the continent. In April 1959, Kenyatta was released from Lokotong but was subjected to a restricting order. He resided in Lodwar, where he was joined by his wife Angina. International pressure mounted for his release, with leaders like Julius Nyerere and Kwame Krumah advocating for him. The indefinite detention of Kenyatta was widely criticized as a reflection of British imperialism's cruelty. International bodies and Kenyan activists demanded his release. With the impending inevitability of Kenyan independence, negotiations took place at Lancaster House in London. Kenyatta's role in the future of Kenyan politics became crucial. The anti-colonial movement split into Kanu and Kadu parties, and Kenyatta was nominated as Kanu's president. However, the government vetoed it, alleging his involvement with the Mau Mau. Kanu campaigned for his release, gaining majority votes in the election. Eventually, a Kadu-led coalition formed the government, while Kenyatta advocated for unity between the parties. Preparing for independence and border disputes, 1961-1963, with Kenya's independence on the horizon, Governor Renison decided to release Kenyatta before the elections to diminish his popularity as a perceived violent extremist. In April 1961, Kenyatta was flown to Maralal, maintaining his innocence but expressing no grudges. He denied supporting violence or the Mau Mau's oathing system and emphasized his African nationalism. He moved to Gatundu and made public appearances in cities like Nairobi and Mombasa. Kenyatta aimed to position himself as the primary choice for Kenya's future leader. He joined Kanu, accepted its presidency, and won an uncontested election. Kenyatta fostered a close friendship with Malcolm MacDonald. The last British governor, who supported the acceleration of Kenya's independence, Kenyatta traveled to Tanganyika and Ethiopia, addressing key issues such as the border dispute with Somalia in the northeast province. He insisted that the disputed land remain part of Kenya and urged ethnic Somalis to return to Somalia. Despite a meeting in Mogadishu, no agreement was reached. Kenyatta also sought the confidence of the white settler community, understanding their economic significance and the need for Western investment. He assured them that competent black individuals would replace white civil servants gradually. His efforts gained support from prominent white Kenyans. In London, Kenyatta attended the Lancaster House Conference where representatives from Kanu and Kadu collaborated with British officials to create a new constitution. Kadu favored a federalist state, while Kanu sought a more unified system with an elected head of government. Kenyatta made concessions to Kadu's demands, knowing he could amend the constitution later. The resulting constitution established regional assemblies, a strong central government, and a temporary coalition government until independence. 
Malcolm McDonald replaced Renison as governor, expediting plans for independence due to concerns about radicalization among African nationalists. Elections were scheduled for May. Self-government for June, and full independence by December 1964, leadership and independence, 1963 to 1964, in the May 1963 general election, Kenyatta's Kanu triumphed over Kadu, the Akamba People's Party, and independent candidates, securing 83 out of 124 seats in the House of Representatives. As a result, a Kanu majority government replaced the existing coalition 